right, we're making candy today at the Sea Shop. When it comes to iconic Birch Bay landmarks, the Cielo building, the Sea Shop, it's always there, Keith. It's always there. Keith Allisey, family business since, what, 1971? 1971, yeah. Right. My mom and dad started it then, and they just needed some sort of summer job to do to go along with a school teaching job, so that's what we wound up with, was a candy shop. We're making candy today. The shop's not open, but... You told me that making candy when people are here and during your business hours is is part of the fun of yeah, being the sea shop. Yeah, that's why we screen right here. Hey, if these folks feel like it, they can wander up and uh, I'll give them lessons on how to make sea foam. All right, and you were telling me this table has been a part of the sea shop since 1971, Keith. Yep, yeah, it, it has, and it is not the oldest thing around here by a wide <laughs> margin. Uh, this popcorn popper right here uh, was made in 1947. Oh, wow. Uh, pops five gallons of popcorn at a time, uh, has a big gas burner down underneath there. Okay. That white box over there is our oven used for making cinnamon rolls and cookies. Uh, it was built by Edison Electric. As near as we can tell, it was made in 1916. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so we had fun celebrating its 100th birthday a few years ago. We should fire this off and we can get the other things ready to go as we cruise along. Okay, and that uh, stove looks so like it's been around a while, too. It has been. I don't know what age this one is. Savage is still around as a company. I just had to buy a new ring from them last year. The newer stoves have had aluminum cast legs for years, and this one has cast iron ones. Okay. So we've got a uh, gas flame going on down underneath there. All right. And it is fed by gas flowing up through this tube and through this rotometer. So we got ourselves a nice little bit of red plastic there that you see jumping up in the air as I turn the flame on it. All right. So here we go. Let's go. Don't want to leave any uh, dry sugar down against the bottom of the pot because it'll kind of burn. So make sure that's all mixed in there. Don't want to. Don't want you to give away any secrets. But what are we looking at? There, as far there are no secrets at the sea shop. That is the general pattern. Okay. You get to come and see all of this stuff made, uh, and I will tell you everything I know about how to do it. If you're going to stand around and listen, <laughs> let's start. Hey, let's start with the vessel. So, oh, this uh, copper pot, yeah. um, and this is the oldest of our four pots. Uh, if you take a look right here, you can see that it's made out of two pieces of pop copper with a castellated joint here and there. So this is a very old technique for making the pots. Uh, probably would have been hand beat over a wooden form. Somebody had to get that joint all done nicely and make it fit well and then braise it together. This technique for making pots was abandoned before 1900. So this is a pot made in the 1800s. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this like, is a cross between Discover Thursday and Antiques Roadshow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what do we have in the pot right so now? So right now we have four pounds of brown sugar and we have two cups of apple cider vinegar. This is going to go ahead and cook up to 260 degrees. At that point, the pound and a quarter of honey is going to go in. Okay. Uh, then we'll continue cooking up to 295 degrees. Um, so the temperature at which a water sugar mixture is boiling is a function of its ratio between water and sugar. So pure water boils at 212 degrees. When you get to 305 degrees, that's the temperature you've boiled off all your water. Pick any temperature between those two points and you always can tell what your ratio between water and sugar is. Okay. So a huge amount of what we're doing in candy cooking is we're trying to go ahead and get the right ratio between water and sugar to get the texture of the candy that we're looking for. And as we do this, this uh, this wasn't the original home of the sea shop. It's now an iconic building and landmark like we mentioned, but it wasn't the original. No, we were originally down where the uh, Shore Acres condos are these days, and uh, the, what was the Shore Acres, sorry, the Jacob Landing Jacob condos. Landing, yeah. Uh, and what was the Shore Acres building down there. Um, actually, this window and that set of windows are out of that building. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, I can't open them up easily, but this one can be opened up so I can pass big equipment from one room okay. to the other. And the joint right there, I've intentionally never painted, so it has a little bit of original Sea Shop yellow from 1971 on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, wonder if I, I wonder if the camera will pick that up. That is cool. And, and what was this building, Keith? Uh, it was built as a resort building, really. Okay. Um, so Prior Key was kind of the first proprietor of the resort, um, and uh, he had this middle section of the building. He had gas pumps off the end. It was a kind of the central building for kind of basically the neighborhood behind the sea mm -hmm. shop now. 
was the kind of campgrounds that went with this resort. Okay. This whole series of little cabins down along the Terrell Creek, and you could rent a cabin there, or you could set up your tent. And it was very common back in those days for everybody to want to get out of the cities because it was before the you know advent of antibiotics, and so it was very common to have bacterial diseases flowing through cities in the okay. summertime. And so people would come up and they camp for longish time periods here in Birch Bay. Uh, the thing that's now the gift shop off the east of the building used to be located back to the south, and uh, it was the uh, kind of communal shower and bathroom area um, <laughs> that was okay. all the whole campground. Yeah. So the sea shop, having been here 50 years, obviously a part of a long, rich history, and but it's a good fit. It's a it, because oh, the yeah. candy making has the nostalgia and everything with it, so it's a great fit. There was actually uh, supposedly a couple of teachers selling candy out of the west end of the building in the teens. Okay. Uh, we've got pictures of the building from that time period. Um, and uh, it says Royal Ice Cream on the, the building down there. And I can still see a chunk of the kind of Y and the A from the Royal as on a board that's up in the attic. See, so now we got our candy boiling along. So it's time to put a thermometer in and time to wash it down one more time and see where we're at on things. So, get all the little sugar crisps down inside there. And we're making sea foam, yeah. and you were telling me before we started recording that sea foam is certainly one of the, the best sellers at the sea shop. Um, hmm. Is it one of the best sellers, Molly? Probably. We make it fairly nice. It's one of the top things. It's not yeah. like caramel. is probably the caramel. Big, biggest thing by weight. Why? Caramel, peanut butter, yum. Everybody's got their favorites. You know, if there's like one perfect candy for everybody all the time, we don't want to make that. That's yeah. the reality is that like, hey, the right piece of food for somebody is going to be different at different times, and we're going to do our best to try and make something that is, so that when somebody walks in, that hopefully they can find the thing that is to them at that particular moment the right thing. Do you have a favorite? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, my favorite to eat is uh, butter coffee. Uh, made a batch of that just the other day. It's yeah. hard to go wrong with combining six pounds of butter and six pounds of sugar and a couple of pounds of almonds all together. <laughs> <You're> right, <laughs> right. Now, how much do you make all of the candy here? Everything with a yellow label is something we make here. If it's okay. got a white label on it, it means we bought it from somebody else, and it normally says on the white label who it is we bought it from. We figure that's just the honest approach to the whole thing. Uh, when we bother to buy something, it's coming from some friend of ours who has some piece of equipment we don't have. Uh, sure. Turkish Delight from my buddy Jordan. You were telling me, Keith, that you guys will hire quite a few when it comes to seasonal help yep. um, every year. And that's, I think that's part of what lends to the tradition, right? You hear so many people say, well, I had a job at the sea shop, my summer job here, there. Yeah, that, have, that's that's part of the yeah, rich history. We have hundreds of people who've worked here in the sea shop over the years. I don't remember the exact count. Molly might remember what our most recently assigned uh, crew member number is. It's like 750, I think. Okay. So, oh, wow, yeah. that's huge. <laughs> that's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the, uh, so this is the last ingredient we've got to go in. This is going to be uh, three tablespoons of baking soda. I've sifted it once. We're going to sift it again before we're done. But it's uh, all sitting there ready to go. As this cooks along more, then I'll need to tend to it more often. But, you know, early stages, it can just boil along. Um, so kind of some of the fun chemistry is that in all candies, we're trying to get the right texture in the end. And in most cases, that means that you don't want it to be grainy. And most candies, we're going to be using sucrose. Normal white sugar is our main ingredient. It's the best tasting of the sugars. It also always tries to form a crystal. Um, it's a slightly, uh, it's a disaccharide, so it's a slightly more complex sugar. Okay. It's, that's one way to look at it. It's like a fructose molecule and a glucose molecule stuck together. Well, the good news is that it's relatively easy to break that bond. If you just put sucrose in your mouth, enzymes in your mouth, invertase is the name of it, uh, will invert the sugar, they'll break it apart into glucose and fructose is the first step of your body processing it. Supposedly a high percentage of the conversion has been done by the time it makes it to your belly. So the handy thing is that the glucose component will block crystal formation in sucrose. Okay. So I haven't added any glucose into here 
Uh, we're getting close to where we're going to add a little bit, and the honey is going to bring in a little glucose, mostly fructose, um, and some sucrose in solution. Um, it's going to go in at another couple of degrees here uh, when we hit 260 degrees. Uh, but the other thing that we've been doing is that there's a different way to break sucrose into glucose and fructose, and that's by boiling it with an acid. So we started with two cups of apple cider vinegar in here, so we've been intentionally burning some of the sugar as we've been cooking. That'll make it so that we don't get crystallized candy in the end. The other thing is that the fructose, so I should give you the description <laughs> of what seafoam is supposed to be. Uh, so if you go biting into a chunk of sea shop seafoam, and ours is different than any other place that I know of because I made up the recipe myself. Right. If you go biting into a uh, piece of sea shop seafoam, the first thing should happen is you should get this just massive crunch. I had read some article about how part of what we all like about potato chips is the tactile crunching sensation, and I got to thinking about, well, I'd like to figure out what candy I can have that will do that, and so then when I decided I wanted to have seafoam become a yellow label candy when it had for years been a white label candy at the sea shop, then I said, okay, seafoam's the perfect thing to be as crunchy as I could possibly make it. Um, so hopefully you get a big monstrous crunch. Uh, if you're slightly startled the first time because you think that maybe a tooth broke, that's actually just right as long as your tooth doesn't actually break. And so far nobody's tooth is actually broken. Um, then as you're crunching along on it, and you know it's coated in chocolate, and so the chocolate should be melting, and you chocolate swirling around inside your mouth, and you should kind of notice that the crunching is transitioning over to chewing as you go, and about the time that like all the chocolates work its way out of your mouth, then you should just be down to this nice kind of chewy, caramel, honey, brown sugar, molasses nugget kind of hanging out in your molars and kind of giving off waves of flavor as you do. Your tag says since 1975, which incidentally, Keith, was the year I was born. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> See, I was born in 68, so I was okay. seven. And this is not, a, that was actually not when I started working at the sea shop. That's when we have photographic evidence of my parents' child labor law violations because <laughs> I'm working with my brother as a making a cooked candy, and I know I wasn't allowed to touch the hot candy stove when I was a little kid. I had to wait till I got a little older, like okay. seven. Having been around 50 years, how many recipes do you have that were around 50 years ago? Are there any? Oh, yeah, they're all. They're but, all, but, but they've been modified, right? Yeah, I don't think there's anything that's hasn't changed at least somewhat because the goal is always to try and make the candy better. Right. Um, and so anytime we can figure out how to make the candy better, we then do that. Um, so for instance, here is the seafoam recipe. Yes, you can look at any recipe you want in here. I'll tell you all about it. Um, oh, wow. Uh, so let me get what a treasure trove. Da, da, da. There's the seafoam recipe. So this one has, you know, there's the base recipe. Yeah, I gotta go stir in on that. Each of these sheets is notes on different batches, and there's mold. Anytime you see a date off on the left, that's a different batch. So okay, yeah, you know, there's three different batches that on that particular note sheet. So these are all just the processes of dialing it into where it's at now. So yellow label is made out of this building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's important for tourists because I know people, the visitors, they come in, they want stuff that originates it's, from that it's area. It's our job to curate the candy and make sure it's great stuff, whether we made it or we bought it. Um, but we're going to try really hard to have whatever the best we can on offer. So I'll get the flame off now, but I'm going to go ahead and keep stirring. So now we need to cool it off a little bit. So why do we have vinegar? Well, it was inverting the sugar producing glucose to keep the thing from crystallizing, uh, producing fructose to keep it from sticking to our teeth. Remember the last ingredient we're dumping in here is our baking, baking soda. Baking soda. Well, what do we know about baking soda and vinegar? So that's that. We will get that to all I think I made nicely. volcanoes. We're making a little volcano. Yes. But if I dump it in right now, what we're really trying to do, we're trying to make a souffle out of sugar. If I dump this baking soda in at this point, it's too hot. It's gonna okay. boil up super great. Um, we're going to have our super light fluffy souffle and then it's going to collapse back into the very sad souffle. A lot of like memories in this building uh, or with this business, I'm sure, for you and your family. Do you have a favorite? I'm putting you on the spot here a little um, bit, Keith. 
You're right, lots of good memories. <laughs> One of my favorites, actually, um, is uh, how when I was when I was a kid, that my folks had uh, they're trying to do what they could to support libraries in the area, which is a, something that you know mm -hmm. now my adulthood is something that's very important to me these days too. Yeah, um, and so they had told the Walker County Library System that if they moved the bookmobile stop down to the sea shop, then we'd give away a snow cone to anybody who checked out a book. An offer which still stands today. Okay. Um, and so just bring your book in on Wednesday or whatever day you're here, show us that it's a library book, you get a snow cone. Outstanding. Um, so my little brother and I thought it was pretty dang cool that our parents had figured out how to get the bookmobile to come to our house. Um, and honestly, the idea of sitting on that oven in a cold spring day, eating an ice, a snow cone, and reading our books. There's some nice picture of my little brother and I sitting on there doing that. Cool. You know, we're wearing our coats, we're sitting on the oven, we're eating snow cones, and we're reading library books. It, it, it's a good memory. Down to 275, and Keith, you said 273, 274-ish is what yep. we're shooting for? Here's the 274 right now. Shortly, I'll keep it all moving nicely. There it is, 273. So, monitor out. Don't need that anymore. And we're going to take our two tablespoons of baking soda and sift that into there to make sure we don't have any more lumps. Okay, now watch the fun of this. So, get that stirred in there. Start to see it taken out take an effect there. Okay. So what it is is that the baking soda is involving carbon dioxide and we're putting a bunch of little carbon dioxide bubbles into our candy and that's why it's changed its color because you can't see down deep into it because the air, the gas bubbles anymore. And that's what's going to make it more of that traditional foam that's color. That's how we're getting yep. our foam out of here. So um, and it's kind of fun in that like okay yeah all the chemistry comes because well degrees in plastics engineering, but I spent years working at a polyurethane foam plant <laughs> analyzing cell structure on polyurethane foams as part of my job, and uh, it really came in handy when it came time to developing this candy. So it almost looks kind of stretchy, taffy-like. It, it is, but it is very hot. Remember, it was 273 degrees when we dumped our uh, baking soda in there. So what we're really doing is we're basically making foam insulation out of sugar. And then that candy's actually going to sit here and continue to cook. And so the next step we need to do is actually to cool it off at a quick rate so it doesn't continue to cook and burn itself. So... And the other thing is that just like cotton candy, this is forever going to be trying to draw the moisture out of the air and turn it back into sticky sugar syrup. And we need to not have that go on. And so we need to protect it from the, uh, oxygen, or the moisture in the air by putting a layer of silicone across the top of it. And now we're going to herd it around into the corners here of the pan. If I get the pan totally full, but not over full, that means I picked my temperature for when we added the baking soda in just right. And it looks like I did better than I did yesterday. It was like yesterday, but... It's always sure. the goal, right? Better than yesterday. Uh, there's <laughs> always a little variation, and, you know, the, the goal is always to make something that's good enough. And, uh, well, there's no such thing as perfection. So all and whenever gets is just good enough, and the ongoing attempt to make good enough slightly better all the time. Okay, now with that all thickness, we're going to take and we're going to turn on the cooling water that is running through the bottom of the table here. And so that's going to cool this table off. And we're going to just set up a fan, keep the cold air across the top of the whole thing. And how long will that take to cool to where you want so, it? So, right now it's really hot. It's not perfectly obvious, it's squishy. So that way, we, because we know we've got hot sugar that's flexible, we know it's really hot, but it's not actually burning me unless it, it's not sticking to me. The thing is that 
we've made foam insulation out of sugar. Right. And if you think about different things, if you touch a piece of steel and it's cold, you're going to know about it. If it's hot, you're going to know about it. If you grab a piece of aluminum and it's cold, you're going to know about it. If it's hot, you're going to know about it. Have you ever grabbed hot styrofoam before? Oh uh, yeah, I guess not. Oh, but you have, you just didn't know. Right. Have you ever grabbed cold styrofoam before? Absolutely, yeah. you've grabbed a can of pop out of a cooler full of ice before. It was cold. Your body's ability to know how, what temperature something is is a function of how, what rate it puts heat into your body or removes heat from your body, not its actual temperature. Okay. So. The conductivity, I guess. The conductivity. Yes. Because this doesn't conduct its heat quickly, it's not obvious that it's actually hot. But we know we got to get the heat out. When the top won't squish anymore is uh -huh. when I know that it's cool enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we'll just let it cool for a while, and that'll take several minutes. And uh, But then we'll have the fun of... Uh, breaking off little bits of stuff around the edge and hey if you're here and visiting when we're making it it's your opportunity to get to try some sea foam before it has the chocolate on the outside and to have something that you just got to see get made which is kind of fun